big strong thing then or that, but you know, you've got to make you've got to do your homework, you know, is it gonna be upset? Someday I've got no problem with it. if I bring a better player in and he's a good professional. And off they drop, say, say man, they're always playing right back a couple of times or doozy, and off they drop then, I've got no problem with that whatsoever. But you know, you play watching the thing with your team, if he becomes more important and his wages are way up there and the rest are down there, I've been idea. For such a great player um, and a fellow professional, we say something like that is a disgrace, absolute disgrace. So is. I mean, he. They've come out. I can understand them being being disappointed. I really can. Don't get me wrong. But um, to say that about another professional is is nah. It's just not one. It's just not one. You know and. We 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 had loads of injuries, loads of injuries, and then who gives a penalty away? We Mark McGarry, who's the biggest Celtic supporter ever. You think I'm going to say Mark McGarry? You better get a penalty away when the league. No, I hope, man. You know, so you think? Nah, outstanding disappointment, but oh, it was, it was terrible. What was the reaction of your your boys after hearing that? We went straight to Mallorca. I was I was raging. I mean, because the phone was loud, didn't he? I says to Jimmy. Because we were always under pressure because of the Rangers background and, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. I said, Nick, we're out of here. I said, don't even, we never even went to Big Alley. I said, we'll phone him later on. Because the cameras came to us, they didn't go to Big Alley. Mm -hmm. You know, they looked for something. We never even went to Shake Alley's hand, nothing. Boom, and we're going straight to the, we're going straight to the airport and we're going to wait, think we've got the boys. In Chairman and all that. I didn't know a thing. I got any, uh, checked my bags in. We'll find about eight o'clock or something, and uh, then all the crap started. You know, the journalists on the phone and all that. I said, I don't believe this. I do not believe it. You know, and then yeah. I mean they they could have won their own game. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was an absolute disgrace. It really was. Did you ever get an apology? No. No. You ever spoken to him since? No. With that? No, we were a good team. You just got to tell them that. We went to Ivo's once, we played two at the back, we were all shooting scared that because we were that quick. And we got beat, I think we got beat 1 0 with, with, with three minutes to go. I'm talking about a good Rangers team, not like this. I'm talking about the Boer and all them boys. You know, we were brilliant. We were brilliant. You know? And it annoys me because that's on the only ground I've ever won it. It annoys me. You know, because for the chance many times with Dunfermline, well, maybe the only that time with Dunfermline, but definitely with Aberdeen. And, um, we never had any, because we were a good team, we were, I mean, we were all, we, we blew it, we blew it that once, we, we just come up, but then we were getting better and better, and it was 6th, 5th, 4th, and it was just all the time, and they knew they were in for a game, and they knew how, how well organised they were, you know, and, as I say, we always had loads of pace, and people that could get around the place, and all this kind of stuff, like, you know, and it was, it was a joy, it was a joy to take them, they were, they were great, and we could go anywhere and win a game. I thought beforehand we could beat them, mm -hmm. you know, because we had the quality there and I think we I, I had to drop big bully that day and I brought young Aaron in, you know, and I don't know, because the kids had pace again, you know, when you were like Henry, it was going to be something, wasn't going to cause us a problem, because Skeller saw that one, it was the same again, we wanted to press them high up the park, we were only going to sit back and wait and see what Celtic were going to do, we were going to put them under pressure, because they don't like it, and they're no used to it, and uh, we, were, we, we thought we deserved our we lead at that moment in time, and afterwards, I never realised at the time. Obviously, we could have got a penalty. I didn't. I didn't realise it. I think it would have been a soft one, to be honest. But it's kind of written in the thingy for Henrik, wasn't it? You know what I mean? How did it feel for you walking out at Hamden? Ah, walking and, and to Hamden. see that apparent seventeen thousand pass. Fantastic. And the next day, and all, we had, a, we had an open day at the ground. And then we were going to Mallorca. And then when we were still starting with Aberdeen, it was. I mean, people coming up with you. I don't forget this guy coming up and, and uh, baby, they had, they had a baby like, and it was, um, I think it was about a week old or something. And it was at final. This will never happen again, Jimmy. This will never happen in my time again. And it was so proud, and it was like, it was fabulous atmosphere. I mean, even though we got beat, actually, the, 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 the annoying thing was, it was poor for the club. 
the night was poor for the club. I told all the boys to come back. You had Darren Young, you had Derek Young, you had and I think we were. And Barry Nicholson, you all lived in Glasgow. I said, right, we're going back to the club. And the club done nothing for the boys. I said, at least get you boys some drinks and all that. And you got two drinks or something, and that was it. Like, well, it was a big do one. And I thought, nah, this is not, this is not right. They don't deserve that. We already were disappointed that we lost on the Saturday night. The boys are back in on the Sunday because it was an open day and, you know, they had to go. Mm -hmm. And the support was fantastic. It was great. You know, and then they accepted it. You know, okay, probably written the, the, the thing, which is these things sometimes are with a great player like Larson. Um, but that was, that was fabulous. You, you see how, how much it means to people, mm -hmm. you know. Everyone takes 20%. And uh, they agreed. In the end, everybody. And then um, it was February, March, April. And then we went into May, so it was four months, and they were going to get all their bonuses back and all that. In fairness, I mean, they, they, they were absolutely fabulous. I mean, they cup final, and I think we finished third or fourth. You know, which is a lot about the character of the boys. And then um, I go to a meeting. Two weeks, as we even think, maybe because about two weeks before the cup final, two or three weeks, and we're in the final, obviously, and thought, 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 believe I think we were third or fourth. We have a meeting with um, Big Tony, that's in here, Castle, with Belief and John. We start talking, I went, Oh, wait, hold on a minute here. And I looked at her faces and I says, Tony, Jackie, can you leave us a minute? I said, she's promised me the boys were getting a money back. Ah, oh, well, no. I just went, I'm off. And I walked out, I said, two weeks, two weeks before the final, maybe ten days before the final, I said, you can tell them boys, I've kept your heads above water all the time, you better go and tell these. Come and tell them tomorrow morning, before training. Fair big Johnny was there. Can you find me anywhere? That was annoying. That was annoying. At, at, at that moment in time, I'm not going to say I couldn't bring him any further, but that's where I felt. And the players knew it. Mm -hmm. Let's feel something, you know. And uh, the players had no problem. And the players were ready to think, you know, especially after that. You know, and my wife was getting abuse at the uh, supermarket and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, I think. And any time I went to East End Park after that, it was like, you know, news. I think I think they realise now, and hopefully after all this, they'll know a lot better um, how it went. We loved it, absolutely loved it. But it was it was at that moment in time. I think you're right. It was probably that was probably the start of the or the beginning of the end to to the, to the good times. You know, because we first division and then it was ninth, sixth, fifth, fourth, and then one year third, and it was plus it was good football. Plus they were gaining money for players. You know, I was not just buying players all the time. You know, we never really bought that many, to be honest, but, you know. And they were getting loads of money for you. They went to Europe, and um, finishing third or fourth, they, uh, I don't know how much it was, but it was a right few balls. You know, so that was really, really disappointing, and I got everything thrown at me. I, mean, I never said nothing. I never said nothing. I was, I was, because, you know, I kept it head above water. And I was, I'll never forget, I was sitting in the same table like this, and, I'm looking at 20%, 30%, and I'm going, Alicia Cross. What's this got? Oh, he's director. <laughs> I'm off. I'm getting out the door. Don't know what happens. Never going to do very much if anything happens. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, especially when you talk about money, I think, um, you know, we're all Scottish. I've never been one, I've never really been a spender. I've never been at a club that I, I was going to. Uh, uh, be like that anyway. I don't want to do like that. That's not the way my upbringing was in, 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 in Govan. You know, you would you would still look at it. I wouldn't be as bad as me, Paul, but I would still look at it and try and make sure. I would hate to think that it was my fault that a club went into thing. I know for a fact I can look at myself in the mirror and say, in all them years, we never lost nothing. I don't decide the wages. I talk to the agents, talk to John. John goes to Garvin. Can we afford it? Can we afford it? And if they put a gamble at any time, I find out the wages and I say, no, listen, 
Oh, do you want to talk to me? I say, no. It's too big a gap here. I don't want that. You know what I mean? I don't want it. It should all be around about the same. Mm -hmm. Bonus is definitely the same. Parents money the same. Okay, fun is better than the other. You can get this, but you've got to have a, you've got to have a ceiling on that. You can't go. I just don't feel like anything. And then these we get seven or eight thousand maybe. You know, but now with three you can't you can't do that. It's just, just I would hate, I would hate that, and that's why I'm that annoyed that these kind of things come out. And a couple of journalists have phoned me, and I'm going to bring you out in a couple of, a couple of days. No, to say we Craig have round on it, Aberdeen, Sunday, probably at least at Dunfermline on it, to say we're doing baiting. So, that's where he goes. It depends, you're, you're back to this, the, the phase where you were in. Um, when I first came to Dunfermline, mm -hmm. you know, what's your ambition? And their ambition was great, and it was a great time. I loved it. I loved it. I think I made a good choice. Um, and Aberdeen was, was the exact same, you know. It, since then, you've been kind of fighting fires, the relegation mm -hmm. battles, whether it be here, whether it be, whether, whether it be in Holland. Um, that's a different kind of thing altogether, but luckily, we've been very successful with that. And um, it was just a matter of hoping that somebody phones and but I I, I, I can't really see it being in Scotland to be honest. I don't know. I think I'm uh, for some reason uh, I've upset a few people. I don't suffer fools gladly. I've been at Hamden a few times and got fined, you know, and I know I was right. But I'm, I'm the one that's getting fined. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't suffer fools gladly anyway, so you know, sometimes you've got to bite your tongue and that's not my best one of my best attributes, you know. If I think I'm getting done, or something that I've not done, and that's happened a few times. So, I don't know, I think it would probably be uh, somewhere abroad. What would you do in South? Would you fancy going back? I would love to. I would love to. I've not managed there. I mean, I played there for a long time. I was at Birmingham a couple of weeks ago, uh, when all players do, so I see all my mates. It was absolutely fabulous. Uh, really, he's doing well. You know, at that moment in time, he was, he was struggling a wee bit. You know, um, I don't know, I just want to work. I mean, being, I've never been in a house this long in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't suit me. And it certainly doesn't suit my wife. <laughs> so, um, no, I was just waiting. I was in Holland last week. There's a couple of things going on there. Um, what can we Craig you then? And this, you know, you're not even uh, in the frame, like, you know. No, we're big headed. But you look at it, and you look at the stats. So there will be too many that just go be on the outside the old firm mm -hmm. by a country mile. They come up. They were on Fairman's first game. Was it the first away game? Was it the third? They were Inverness were using the stadium. Mm. I came in. I met the game in, and I was talking to me bars and all that. And fucking uh, region, because big, big John was going to meet me. On a Saturday morning, when I got back from Aberdeen, I mean, fucking messing about. Told you didn't about thing, man. Come in, I, I come back early. I says to Leash, make sure there's no press at this airport. Fucking Leash is in a tracksuit and, 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 and he's got all the press with him. I'm going, oh, God, I can't do it. I said, when do you ever wear a tracksuit? When do you ever wear a tracksuit? <laughs> you never wear a tracksuit when you're a manager. I said, anyway, you got my paperwork. Willie Miller's coming to the ground tomorrow. I need to pay what I've looked for. There it is. So I'm reading it going back for the airport and that. She says, she's not agreed with Big John. Oh, well, uh, right, I said, Willie Miller's here at 9 o'clock in the morning. Make sure you're there. Make sure Claire's there, etc. We're getting this done. Comes in. Give me this. I said, Leash, this is not right. Ah, well, uh, this is Gavin. I said, right, give me the phone. Oh, I've not got his number. I said, fucking hell, you phone him. I think in five minutes, you've got his number. I said, get him. Oh, no, don't you mean I don't know? I said, right. Clear, secretary. Clear. Get yeah, fucking Gavin's number for me right away. All right, 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 right. Oh, so you found it now? Right, I'm away. I said, don't belong, because I'm going to be Aberdeen. I said, I can't believe you. You're getting 200 grand for me, 100 grand for Jimmy. You're getting all your money back. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm losing my wages. I said, what's going on? And, uh, oh, it took ages. Ages. And that's when I first started. I didn't have an argument with Gavin, to be honest, because I'd never seen him. He'd never come out. Get him out of his ivory tower. Fucking want to talk to him and this and that. And I was raging then. I left Big John in the filthy because it was funny. It was funny in way such. Um, 
get one in Paul, get one to see me in, in, in Mallorca and I'm in the beach. I'm like, what the hell, Jim? Right. I said, you get 300 grand, 200 for me, 100 for Jimmy. I said, you can't keep us. Okay, who's money anyway? He says, you'll be a fortune, you know, anything there. Ah, no, 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 I haven't. I said, okay, you're having it. So, Howard Kendall was there. And Howard Kendall was there. I was sitting on the beach, and Howard says to my mate, it's Sandy and I, what's going on here? I says, uh, there was champagne there, he's fucking Liverpool boys and all that. I says, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy may be going to Aberdeen. Oh, is that right? So, he's sitting there, picks a cigar, Howard, and he's like, Mr. Chairman, now you are, don't fucking, fucking Aberdeen, anything with him going to Aberdeen, don't worry, uh, European Cup Winners Cup Final, English Champions, he says, there's my phone number. <laughs> I'm, fucking, I'm killing myself laughing at Oh, Jesus, I've been joined, this one's going, I had to see me Monday, I had to see me Tuesday, Wednesday, kept pulling me on the telephone, I don't need to see. Anyway, it's sort of doing the Thursday, I said, look, John, so the two ways going well, and I'm going well with the big man, you know? I says, uh, we'll go out Saturday night. I'm fine. All right. Come back for the day. I'm going to. I'm going to. We're flying back. We're flying back on Friday. We're going Saturday. I'm going to Aberdeen. Back doing. Uh, I'll be back doing Saturday morning. And we're going Saturday night. Ah, brilliant. Packs of papers up on Saturday morning. He slaughtered me. He's absolutely slaughtered me. I've got what is this? I'm raging. So obviously that's good for a meal. And Aberdeen. Aberdeen. I think we first away game that season. The film was it. Be toyed with. So they come in. I've been to the Chiefs six weeks later, like, you know, I'd be seeing and all that. I've been raging. Aberdeen are playing, wait, they're playing Inverness because Inverness are playing there. And I think we were playing this, we were playing this Sunday, I think. So, what do you think? At least she was going out and coming in the fucking boardroom at Aberdeen. <coughs> fucking door opening, I'm so raging. Have you scattered about? Yeah! Right up at Big York, it was right in his face. He said, he said, he said, she didn't want to know. And I told him what I thought of him. Left of the game, I think, I fell my lung, I'm not sure. I just said, they're letting any come into this fucking stadium nowadays. He <laughs> can't pass right beside mine. Me and Sandy and Jimmy walk out. His car's right beside mine. John's on the phone. I'm going, they're letting any come in there. No, Jesus Christ. Never spoke to him for ages. Ages. I'm amazed. I mean, I just cannot understand how that can happen. But especially, with, I mean, John's got his own business, mm -hmm. Gavin's got his own business. So I spoke to, I was at a rugby game with John, with John Meeklum a couple of weeks ago, and, and uh, Brian, uh, uh, Brian, who used to be a, uh, I can't remember his name, great lad. He was on the board and all, and they're very bitter and all. You know, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's John and, and, and Gavin, Gavin's obviously changed, but I think he's more, I think they're more annoyed with the daughters than, but Gavin's obviously fine the bullets. But he was never, honestly, so, it was a great club in it really was. I mean, we, we kind of owned Livingston and Dundee at that moment in time, or Gavin owned them, so we say, you think, how can something like that happen? The vision, the vision they had for the club. It was unbelievable. It really was. I mean, he had, to, he had, he had this. He, he, he knew, obviously, the position of Banner Scotland and what's happening. So, all these wee clubs like Stevenage and, and, and all these, uh, Wickham and all these were getting, they were getting, I think they funded by the government. And they were building fitness things on the, the grounds. And that's what his plan was for the like, hotel, the sauna, and then fitness thing, the pit was going to run. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. He was, he was actually miles ahead of his time. And whatever happened, oh, well, I know what happened. Well, I think I know what happened. Livingston was getting you know, some cowboys in there that were stealing all the money. And the cloakroom and the discotheque and all this kind of stuff, which suffered the Garvin then. And then just, and then, um, what you called him? Dominic. Mm -hmm. You know, and then just kind of went, pfft, within a certain amount of time, yeah, I'm going like, Jesus. I knew Garvin, I mean, I, I was in him, I mean, twice a month. You know, just talking about, right, uh, she's, uh, we're trying to get him, or, or, or uh, great it was, me and Big John and, and Gavin. And then, uh, and he was fucking, he's right up there. And, and he, he can't even get in the front door now. Oh, 
Amazing. Amazing. And uh, uh, I mean, it, it, it's a try. But I can't place no one in. I can put it on the hush. You know, nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with us. We, we, we left them with money. Mm. You know? Uh, so I'm going to bring it out. I, I couldn't believe the amount of free transfer players. You, you, you'd be amazed. The fish, the fish in the hut for mm. the club. It's unbelievable. It really was. I mean, he had to. He had, he had this, he, he, he knew obviously the position of the Scotland and what was happening. So all these wee clubs like Stevenage and, and, and all these, uh, Wickham and all these were getting, they were getting thingly funded by the government. And they were building fitness things on the, the grounds. And that's what his plan was for the like, hotel, the sauna, and then fitness thing the pit was going to run. No, yeah, brilliant. He was, he was actually miles ahead of his time. And whatever happened, oh, well, I know what happened. Well, I think I know what happened. Livingston was getting you know, some cowboys in there that were stealing all the money. And the cloakroom and the discotheque and all this kind of stuff. It suffered the Garvin then. And then just, and then um, you called him Dominic. Mm -hmm. You know, and then it just kind of went, within a certain amount of time, yeah, I'm going like, Jesus. I knew Garvin, I mean, I, I was in the moon twice a month. You know, just talking about, right, uh, so you try and get him, or, or uh, great at this, me and Big John and, and Gavin. And then, uh, he was thinking, right up there. And, and he, he can't even get in the front door now. Oh, amazing. Amazing. And uh, uh, I mean, they, uh, they try. But I can't bless no one in I can put it on the hush. You know, nothing to do with us, nothing to do with us. We, we, we left them with money. Mm. 